So this is my finished animation. In all, as a flipbook, it's actually 28 frames, right? All generated from just a nine frame storyboard sketch. Once I'm happy with this on my stage, and there's always things that can be improved, but I'm gonna call that good for now. It's, it's, is it demonstrating a transformation from beginning, middle to end? Yes, I'm trying to show that this plant is eating this creature. That's more clear here than the plants growing the creature and spitting it out because it was just looking like the creature was climbing over the plant. So, so this changes the, the state of something from beginning, middle to end. All right, now I need to save that. First, I save it as my stage file. So I just say save. And now I'm going to go file, export, save for web legacy. This is the only way to save out of Photoshop with GIF with the animation script into the GIF file. So a GIF is a graphic interchange format. It's an old file format. It's one of the, the first digital image file formats and it's limited to no more than 256 colors. So this save for web legacy gives you ways of, of trying different ways to output those colors, but I just tend to use the defaults and then you can test it. You can view it here. And the pixels will look a little bit grainier because it's only 256 colors, not the millions of colors within Photoshop. And then the timing will actually be a tiny bit faster because now it's going to take away the processing time that Photoshop uses. All right. So then I, if you like it, you're going to hit save and it's going to save it as your stage file, but with the GIF at the end. And I'm going to save mine to my assignment three GIF animation folder. I recommend you save yours just to your desktop so you can see where it is. And then I'll show you how you can test it. Now you do not want to save it a GIF animation in any other way, because if you just say file, save as a copy and then as a GIF, at least in older versions of Photoshop, it would flatten it all down and it wouldn't put the animation into there. Okay, now how do you test that GIF? You go to the file. So if you save it to your desktop, it'll just be the GIF file on your desktop. Mine is in here. There it is. I'm gonna mark it as orange. It's, an, it's a type, it's an online file format. GIFs can be placed online. And I have to open it with a web browser. So I can use Firefox, I can use Chrome. I tend to use Safari for this just because I don't use Safari for anything else. And then there it is. And you'll see the real timing. And what's great about GIF files is all you need is a web browser to play them. You don't need any kind of specialized software. You don't need Flash. You don't need plugins. You don't need QuickTime. You don't need a movie viewer. But what if you also want to save it as a movie file? So once you've saved it, and this has been saved as your stage, then you can change it from the timeline view in the bottom corner of the timeline window to the video timeline. It will still play through the same way. But under your hamburger, you'll have the options to render the video. And when you render the video from the video timeline, it will save it in millions of colors. Just keep all the defaults. It will keep your, your size. So this is perfect for like Instagram videos, that kind of thing, which don't accept GIFs. Some social media only accepts MP4 files. This will output it as an MP4. Another reason it's good to learn to compose within squares. And then it will save it. Where did it save it? 
probably to downloads. I should have checked. There it is. And then it will play through once. So my animation is eight seconds long. And then it stops. If I want to play it through multiple times, I need to adjust it in the window. So I, I'll set it to loop for QuickTime for a Mac. Just like Instagram would loop content, right? Or if you're doing like TikTok. Okay. So now I have it saved both those ways. There's only one type of format of those two that can go onto Canvas, and that's the GIF format. So let's do that. Let's go to Canvas, go to where we do the assignment. Post it. And we're just missing one element then after that. So we have our rough storyboard sketch. I changed mine, but I'm gonna post I'm gonna post the final GIF animation. I do it just like I'm posting a still image. I can embed it in. And I drag that GIF and drop it on, and it will automatically start animating. And then scale it so it fits. If you posted your rough animatic animation, make it a little bit bigger than that, All right? So now we're just missing the final component, which is the refined storyboard. So the refined storyboard is turning your GIF animation into a printable comic book of nine frames in a square. It's the way that we're able to print and present animation skills without having something that shows motion. So this is the refined storyboard. This would be the GIF animation. This would be the refined storyboard. This would be the GIF animation. We're gonna do it with a white background because that is better for printing ink. Photo printers, fine art printers are not great for printing flat color because it will show any discrepancy in the print heads. And so you usually just wanna leave backgrounds as as white not gray not black so this is also a new skill that we're going to be learning so in order to do this i need to go to my stage file and i need to turn it back into keyframes if i rendered it as a video and then i need to save it one more time this is like my animated file because now i am going to save or click all of my frames and move them to the trash. And I'm going to close the timeline by going to window and unchecking it. And now I'm going to save this as a different name, a third Photoshop file. So we've had assets, we've had stage. Now we're gonna have refined storyboard. So saving as a refined storyboard as a PSD Photoshop file, because now we're gonna make some changes. One is if we did any animating on the timeline, that's not gonna show up here, right? These are just our layers. So why did I save it before? Because if you did any animating on the timeline, you have to go to before you threw away your timeline. So I'm gonna go back to my history where I converted to the timeline and I'm gonna show the timeline. And I'm gonna convert it back to frame by frame animation, right? So this is a, an intermediate step that anyone can do, but not all of you need to do it. So I have 28 frames, but I don't have 28 layers. That's because I, I animated on the timeline, meeting some, some in-betweens and all of that. So think of it as a flip book with 28 pages. What I'm gonna do is click on the hamburger and I'm gonna say, 
flatten frames into layers. This is the opposite of make frames from layers. Now I'm going to take the images in the frames and it's going to output an individual 100% layer for each one. And you'll see the difference because they're called frames in your layers, not layers. So then I have to erase all of my layers. So I go up to frame one, hold down shift, and then delete. My animation will still work the same way. But at this point, I now get rid of them in the timeline because I'm going to be moving layers around. And then if I haven't already, I can save it as a new file that's called Refine Storyboard. Now I turn off the timeline. In my case, it only matters for a few frames, but I want you to have all the different flipbook pages available to you. So now I have a perfect stack of 28 pages, all as individual layers, right? Think of them as a deck of cards. I want to spread these out on a table so that there's three, a grid of three on three. Photoshop is not a great program for laying things out. The one thing it can do well, I'm going to make sure my image size is 8 by 8 by 100. Good, it is. The one thing it can do well is grow things from the center. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my guides using my move tool and my rulers and make sure that my guides are hugging my 8 inch by 8 inch by 100 pixels per inch image. For those of you who did uh, things that were not square, your measurements are going to be a little different, and I might have to help you figure those measurements out. But this is for anyone who did this square. So now we're going to grow the space around our stack of cards. We're going to make the table that our cards go on. So we go to image and we go to canvas size. And I'm going to make this, this will sound familiar, 30 inches by 40 inches. Hit OK. Then I'm going to hit Command-0 to center it all. And then because the, the tablecloth gingham of the checkerboard is a little distracting. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to say edit fill with white at 100% opacity. And then I'm going to move that blank layer to the bottom. Now I'm going to turn on a new tool for us which helps with layout in Photoshop. If you get into graphic design classes, uh, layouts usually done through InDesign, or through some other layout program. Because laying out, putting things exactly where you want to put them is an important skill. But this is how you can do it in Photoshop. You go to View, and you say Show, and you say Grid. The shortcut for that is Command uh, Apostrophe. So you can toggle that on and off. This grid should be based on your inches, because we set your rulers to be based on inches. So each of these bigger squares is one inch and each of these little squares is a quarter inch. I want you to move your guides one inch away, a new guide one inch away on each side of your image. This creates our gutters, our even space between our storyboard panels. Because if they're even a little bit off it's really distracting. Then you can turn off your grid either by going to view and, and show and uncheck grid or you can just hit command apostrophe. So I'm showing my guides, but not my grid. And this gives me like a training card shark table, all the, the places where I, I can set my frames. So already I have my, my last frame. And I can move that right to the, the stack and it will snap in. Then I can look at my next one. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. They don't look any different. So I have to go to where the next frame that may, might make sense is. Okay, and this is the next frame that maybe makes sense. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to take one of these frames. Actually, I'll just put this at the end. Because what works for animation doesn't always work for storyboards. And I might swap this frame for this one. So at this point, it's helpful to have your move tool with auto, uh, auto select. 
the layer set 